As a college student struggling to make ends meet, I often turned to unconventional ways to earn some extra cash. One of my go-to options was driving for Uber. Most of the time, it was a routine job, but one fateful night, I experienced an Uber ride that would haunt my nightmares for years to come. It was a chilly autumn evening when I received a ride request from a user named Sarah. Her location was a remote, dimly lit street on the outskirts of town. As I approached the destination, my GPS struggled to maintain a connection, leaving me feeling increasingly uneasy. The street grew darker, and a thick blanket of fog rolled in, obscuring my vision. Finally, I spotted the address, an old, decrepit mansion that looked like it belonged in a horror movie. The place sent shivers down my spine, but I couldn't leave a paying customer stranded, so I pulled up to the curb and waited. Minutes turned into what felt like hours, and I began to wonder if I should cancel the ride. Just as I was about to do so, a figure emerged from the fog. Sarah was a young woman with striking ice-blue eyes and long, jet-black hair that flowed like a waterfall. She wore a tattered Victorian-era dress that seemed out of place in the modern world. She opened the car door and got in, her cold presence sending a chill through the cabin. Thank you for picking me up, she said softly, her voice barely above a whisper. I acknowledged her with a nod and started the trip in silence. The atmosphere inside the car grew increasingly eerie, and I couldn't shake the feeling that something was terribly wrong. I stole glances at Sarah, who sat in the back seat, her eyes locked on the road ahead as if she were expecting something dreadful to happen. I tried to make small talk, asking her about her evening, but she remained cryptic and vague in her responses. She seemed lost in thought, her gaze fixated on the rearview mirror where her reflection appeared distorted and unsettling. The fog outside thickened, making it almost impossible to see the road ahead. As I continued to drive, the GPS navigation started acting up, providing inaccurate directions. I grew increasingly frustrated, but Sarah seemed unperturbed. She leaned forward, her cold breath sending a shiver down my spine, and whispered, Turn here. I followed her instructions, driving down an isolated, winding road that led deeper into the darkness of the woods. Panic welled up inside me as I realized I had no idea where we were headed. The trees on either side of the road loomed like menacing sentinels, and the fog had become so dense that it felt suffocating. Where are we going? I finally mustered the courage to ask. Sarah didn't respond, but instead, she handed me a crumpled piece of paper. It was a map, drawn in an archaic style with strange symbols and a path that led to a clearing in the woods. The destination marked on the map sent a cold chill down my spine. I reluctantly continued to follow the eerie map, each turn taking us further into the unknown. The atmosphere inside the car became unbearable, and I could feel a malevolent presence in the air. It was as if the very woods themselves were closing in on us. Finally, we reached the clearing marked on the map. It was a desolate, moonlit glade surrounded by ancient trees. Sarah instructed me to stop the car, and I complied, my heart pounding in my chest. She got out of the car and beckoned for me to follow her. With trembling legs, I stepped out into the chilling night air. The fog had cleared in the clearing, revealing a circle of gnarled trees that seemed to enclose us like a sinister audience. Sarah stood at the center of the circle, her eyes now glowing an otherworldly blue. Suddenly, the ground trembled beneath my feet, and a chorus of ghostly whispers filled the air. The trees around us seemed to come alive, their branches contorting into grotesque shapes. I realized with horror that I was trapped in a nightmare, and Sarah was its malevolent conductor. She raised her arms, and the earth erupted around us, revealing a yawning chasm. I tried to run, but an invisible force held me in place. Desperate and terrified, I watched as Sarah's form distorted, becoming a nightmarish, shadowy figure. With a guttural incantation, she unleashed a torrent of darkness that consumed me, and I descended into a realm of nightmares, where the line between reality and horror blurred into an eternal abyss. To this day, I can't escape the haunting memories of that Uber ride. It serves as a grim reminder that sometimes the darkest and most disturbing stories unfold when you least expect them.
turning a routine job into a horrifying nightmare that lingers in your soul forever. I've always been a bit skeptical of taking ride shares at night, especially in a city as sprawling and chaotic as this one. But on that fateful night, I had no other option. My car had broken down, and I was stuck in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by a thick curtain of darkness that swallowed everything in its path. Desperation led me to open the Uber app, and that's when my nightmare began. The app pinged, indicating that my driver, Eve, was just around the corner. Her profile picture was a nondescript silhouette, which sent a shiver down my spine, but I dismissed it as my overactive imagination. As the car approached, I noticed it was a vintage hearse, an old black Cadillac with tinted windows. It was unlike any Uber I had seen before, but I was too desperate to care. I climbed into the back seat, feeling the unease wash over me. Where to, sir? A disembodied voice asked from the front of the car. It was a woman's voice, cold and emotionless. Just take me home, I replied, hesitating for a moment as I gave her my address. The hearse pulled away from the curb, and we entered the inky abyss of the night. The road was desolate, and I couldn't see a single soul in any direction. A sense of isolation gnawed at me. So, Eve, I attempted small talk, this is quite a unique ride you've got here. No response. It was as though the driver was ignoring me. I leaned forward, trying to catch a glimpse of her through the rearview mirror. All I could see was darkness. No face, no body, nothing. The unease that had been lingering now twisted into full-blown dread. I contemplated telling her to stop and let me out. But something inside me warned against it. I couldn't shake the feeling that I was in danger. Minutes passed in silence and the road ahead seemed never-ending. My heart raced as panic settled in like a heavy fog. Finally, the car came to a screeching halt in the middle of nowhere. The engine died, plunging us into eerie silence. I fumbled for my phone to check the GPS, but it displayed nothing but a blank screen. Where are we? I stammered, my voice quivering. No answer. The rearview mirror still showed nothing but darkness. Just as I was about to open the door and bolt out of the hearse, the driver's seat slowly turned to face me. It wasn't a woman at all. It was a life-sized porcelain doll with glassy, unblinking eyes. Panic surged through me, and I fumbled to open the door, but it wouldn't budge. I was trapped, alone with this unsettling doll in the middle of nowhere. The doll's lips curled into a twisted smile, revealing sharp porcelain teeth that should never have existed. Its voice, the same emotionless one I had heard earlier, emanated from its unmoving lips. You're going to be part of something special. As the words echoed through the car, the darkness outside seemed to seep in. Shadowy figures emerged from the inky blackness, surrounding the hearse. They were grotesque, nightmarish beings, twisted, contorted, and utterly terrifying. I tried to scream but my voice was stolen by the paralysis of fear. My heart pounded like a drum, and I couldn't tear my eyes away from the doll's malevolent grin. The shadowy figures began to chant in a language I couldn't understand, their voices a cacophony of horrors. The hearse seemed to sink into the ground, as if we were descending into the bowels of hell itself. Suddenly, the world outside the car transformed into a nightmarish landscape. Twisted trees with gnarled branches loomed overhead, and the ground was covered in a writhing carpet of snakes. I could feel their cold, scaly bodies slithering around my feet. The doll reached out and touched my hand with its porcelain fingers. A searing pain shot through me, and I watched in horror as my own hand turned into porcelain, just like the doll's. The chanting grew louder, more frenzied, and the hearse descended further into the abyss. I knew that I was trapped in a waking nightmare from which there was no escape. As the darkness closed in around me, I realized that this Uber ride had become my worst nightmare, a descent into a realm of unimaginable horrors. And as the chant reached its climax, I knew that I would be a part of something special, something that was beyond my worst fears. The last thing I heard before the darkness consumed me was the haunting laughter of the doll. 
a chilling sound that would haunt me for eternity. To this day, no one knows what happened to me that night. My family and friends searched for me tirelessly, but I was never found. Some say I disappeared without a trace, while others believe that I met a fate too gruesome to contemplate. But I know the truth. I know that I'm trapped in that hearse, in that nightmarish realm, a pawn in a sinister game played by forces beyond my comprehension, and I know that I will never escape the horror of that unholy Uber ride. I'll never forget that fateful night when I summoned an Uber to take me home. It started like any other ordinary evening, with the promise of a peaceful ride back to my apartment. Little did I know that this Uber ride would turn into a horrifying nightmare beyond my wildest imagination. It was a chilly, moonless night when I stepped out of the dimly lit restaurant. I shivered as I tapped my phone screen, summoning an Uber. The app displayed a five-minute ETA and I leaned against the brick wall waiting for my ride to arrive. Moments later, a sleek black car pulled up in front of me. The driver's name on the app was simply S. Monroe. I slid into the back seat and greeted the driver. Hi, I'm Jack, I said, my breath visible in the cold air. Nice to meet you, Jack, replied the driver in a low, raspy voice. I couldn't make out much of his face in the dim interior, but something about him felt off. His eyes remained hidden beneath a shadowy brim of his hat, and his hands gripped the steering wheel with an unsettling intensity. As we pulled away from the curb, I noticed an eerie silence in the car. The usual soft hum of conversation between driver and passenger was absent. It was just me and this enigmatic driver, surrounded by an oppressive quiet. My unease grew with every passing minute. I cleared my throat, attempting to break the silence. So, how's your night going? No response. The driver continued to navigate the darkened streets with an almost robotic precision. I felt a shiver crawl down my spine as we ventured into unfamiliar territory. The GPS had taken a different route than usual, leading us deeper into an isolated, wooded area. Hey, I think you missed a turn, I said, trying to keep my voice steady. Still, no response from the driver. Panic began to well up within me as I realized that something was horribly wrong. I reached for my phone, intending to call the police, but found that I had no signal. Where are you taking me? I demanded, my voice trembling with fear. The driver finally spoke, but his words sent a chill through my very core. You've summoned a special kind of Uber tonight, Jack. A ride you won't forget. Suddenly the car came to an abrupt halt in the middle of the dense woods. The engine died, plunging us into complete darkness. My heart pounded in my chest as I fumbled for the door handle, desperate to escape this nightmare. But the doors wouldn't budge. They were locked. Panic took hold of me as I realized I was trapped in this nightmarish scenario. The driver turned in his seat to face me, revealing a grotesque, twisted grin beneath the shadows of his hat. Do you believe in stories of the supernatural, Jack? He asked, his voice dripping with malice. I stammered, unable to find my voice. My mind raced with terrifying possibilities, and I had no idea what was happening or how to escape. The driver continued, his voice taking on an otherworldly quality. These woods are cursed, Jack. They've seen things that would turn your hair white. And tonight, you're going to be a part of it. As he spoke, a cold, unnatural wind whipped through the car's interior. The windows fogged up and I saw ghostly figures moving among the trees, their eyes glowing with malevolence. I realized that I had entered a world of horror beyond imagination. The driver's face contorted, revealing a grotesque visage. His skin stretched and warped, revealing inhuman features beneath. My heart raced as I watched in horror, unable to look away. Join us, Jack! The driver hissed, his voice a cacophony of whispers. Become a part of the cursed woods, and you'll never leave. In a desperate bid for survival, I threw my shoulder against the car door, and this time it gave way. I stumbled out into the darkness, the driver's chilling laughter echoing in my ears. I ran blindly through the woods, branches tearing at my clothes, and the ghostly figures pursuing me with relentless determination. I had no idea how long I fled through those cursed woods. But eventually, I stumbled upon a road and flagged down a passing car. 
The driver, a kind stranger, offered me a ride back to civilization. I couldn't find the words to explain what had happened, but the terror in my eyes spoke volumes. To this day, I don't know if the Uber ride from hell was a supernatural encounter or a twisted prank by a deranged individual. But one thing is certain. I'll never forget the night I summoned a ride that took me to the brink of madness. And I can only hope that no one else experiences the nightmare that I endured in those cursed woods.